Button battery ingestion is a medical emergency, particularly in children. The complications of button battery ingestion may include tracheoesophageal fistula, aortoesophageal fistula, vocal cord fibrosis, and bronchoesophageal fistula. Initial management. Do not induce vomiting. Administer a neutralizing agent, such as sucralfate and honey, which work by reducing pH and coating the battery, in order to delay alkaline burns to tissue. The dose of sucralfate is 10 milliliters every 10 minutes up to three doses. The dose of pasteurized honey is 10 milliliters every 10 minutes up to six doses. If sucralfate is unavailable, use pasteurized honey. Imaging Order AP and lateral x-rays of the neck and chest to localize the battery. The halo sign and the step-off sign on x-rays are pathognomonic of a button battery. They help distinguish a button battery from a coin or other round foreign body. The halo sign is observed as a circular glow encircling the button battery when viewed head-on. On the other hand, the step-off sign is the term used to describe the appearance of a button battery when viewed from the side. Risk Assessment Button battery impactions in the proximal and mid-esophagus need to be removed as soon as possible. They are associated with a higher risk of injury compared to battery impactions in the stomach or duodenum. Coagulative necrosis can begin within 15 minutes of contact, but complications may be delayed up to two months. Symptoms may take hours or days to develop, but tissue damage can occur within two hours. Prompt recognition and removal of the button battery within two hours can significantly reduce the risk of severe and fatal injury. The risk of perforation increases dramatically after 12 hours. Management Parents should continue to monitor for symptoms of tissue damage even after the button battery has been removed. For button batteries found in the stomach or colon, endoscopic removal is recommended for patients younger than 5 years old and for batteries larger than 20 mm in diameter. Asymptomatic patients with a button battery in the stomach or beyond can be monitored, and the battery is allowed to pass spontaneously. Imaging should be repeated in four days if the child is under six years old or the battery is larger than 15 millimeters. For older children and adults with smaller batteries, imaging should be repeated in 10 to 14 days. If the battery is still in the stomach at that time, endoscopic removal is indicated. Patients who are discharged should be instructed to return for evaluation if they develop fever, vomiting, or abdominal pain. Bowel irrigation and repeat enemas are not recommended. Button batteries and magnets that are co-ingested need to be removed. Complications Tracheoesophageal fistula and aortoesophageal fistula are serious complications of button battery ingestion. Surgical repair under ECMO support is often required for large tracheoesophageal fistulas. Pneumonectomy may be necessary in severe cases of button battery ingestion. Careful consideration should be given for potential delayed complications, including fistulization into major vessels, which often leads to death. This is an algorithm for managing button battery ingestion in children. Esophageal button battery. For hemodynamically stable patients, Endoscopic retrieval of the button battery is the preferred approach. This minimally invasive technique offers prompt removal. 
Patients with hemodynamic instability or evidence of bleeding, endoscopic removal might be attempted in the operating room setting, potentially requiring cardiothoracic surgical intervention for definitive management. Gastric button battery. Smaller batteries, less than 20 mm diameter, often traverse the gastrointestinal tract uneventfully. Serial abdominal radiographs can be obtained within 24 to 48 hours to track the battery's progress. Large batteries, greater than 20 mm diameter, carry an increased risk of impaction within the intestines. Endoscopic retrieval might become necessary in such scenarios. Esophageal injury. If radiographic findings suggest esophageal injury, hospital admission with NPO and intravenous antibiotic administration are warranted for esophageal healing and infection prophylaxis. A CT angiogram is recommended to definitively exclude aortoesophageal fistula. Consider chest MRI to determine proximity of injury to aorta. Post-procedural management. Following endoscopic removal or spontaneous passage of the button battery, the patient might require a brief hospitalization for observation. They will be monitored for potential complications like bleeding or infection. In conclusion, button battery ingestion represents a life-threatening emergency that demands immediate medical attention and intervention. The halo and step-off signs on x-rays help distinguish a button battery from a coin. If not addressed promptly, button battery ingestion can lead to catastrophic complications such as tracheoesophageal fistula, aortoesophageal fistula, vocal cord fibrosis, and bronchoesophageal fistula. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.